हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माय नेम इज डॉक्टर प्रिया महाजन एंड दिस सेशन इज ऑन इंडियन फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम इन दिस सेशन वी आर कवरिंग द मीनिंग एंड डेफिनेशन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम डिफरेंट कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ इंडियन फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम व्हिच इंक्लूड्स द फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन फाइनेंशियल मार्केट फाइनेंशियल एसेट्स एंड फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज एंड वी विल ऑल्सो डिस्कस ईच ऑफ दीज कॉम्पोनेंट्स वेरी ब्रीफली इन दिस सेशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वट इज फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम Financial system is an organized and regulated structure where an exchange of funds take place between lender and borrower. This system supplies the necessary financial inputs for the production of goods and services which in turn promote the well-being and standard of living of people in the country. Financial system are of crucial significance to capital formation. Now what is capital formation? Capital formation means making of capital goods such as machines tools factories transport equipment materials electricity etc which are all used for future production of goods so it is very important for any economy the process of capital formation involves three distinct although interrelated activities these are the savings finance and investments saving can be as simple as keeping aside money on a monthly basis and become available for other purposes although saving is essential for capital formation but in a monetized economy savings may not directly and automatically result in the production of capital goods saving must be invested in order to have capital goods the next step in the process of capital formation is that the saving of the households must be mobilized and transferred to businessmen or entrepreneurs who require them for investment finance means the process of channelizing money from savers and investors to int entities or companies that need the funds or capital so in the capital markets funds are supplied by individual investors banks investment trust insurance companies finance corporations government etc so entrepreneurs companies can get money from these sources when they lack sufficient funds to operate so finally for savings to result into capital formation they must be invested and investment is the activity by which the resources that is money funds capital are actually committed to production the volume of capital formation depends upon the intensity and efficiency with which these three activities are carried on the effective mobilization of savings the efficiency of the financial organization or system and the channelization of these savings into the most desirable and productive form of investment are all interconnected and have a great bearing on the contribution of capital formation to economic development so we can say that a financial system plays an important role in the economic growth of a country financial system is a mirror on which the economy get reflected when we talk about indian financial system it can be broadly classified into formal financial system and informal financial system the formal financial system comes under the purview of ministry of finance the reserve bank of india the securities and exchange board of india and other regulatory bodies whereas the informal financial system made up of individual money lenders such as neighbors relatives landlords traders and then group of persons operating as firms or association partnership firms consisting of local brokers pawn brokers and non bank financial intermediaries such as the finance investment and chit fund companies In India the spread of banking in rural areas has helped in enlarging the scope of the formal financial system Next is the definition of the financial system Van Horn defines that financial system allocates savings efficiently in an economy to utilize to ultimate users either for investment in real assets or for consumptions as per the prasanna chandra the financial system consists of a variety of institutions markets and instruments which are related in a systematic manner and provide the principal means by which savings are transformed into investments student next is the significance of financial system 
Now, what is the significance or the importance of financial system of any country? Economic development, financial system are important since they encourage or induce people to save by offering attractive interest rates. These savings are then channelized by lending to various business concerns or entities which are involved in production and distribution. It, li it links savers and investors. This process is known as capital formation, which we had already discussed in detail. An efficient financial system further helps in monitor corporate performance. It helps in lowering the transaction cost and increase returns, which will motivate people to save more. And in last, it helps the government in deciding the monetary policy of the country. Next is the structure of financial system. The formal financial system has four components, financial institutions, financial markets, financial assets, financial services. The first component of the structure of Indian financial system is financial institutions or intermediaries. Financial institutions or intermediaries mobilize savings or collect saving from others and issue in return claim against themselves or issue indirect securities and then use the funds thus raised to purchase primary securities from non-financial economic units. For example, mutual fund institutions issue units that is the indirect securities to the lenders and use the raised funds to purchase primary securities from directly the companies. Further, financial institutions can be classified into banking institutions and non-banking institutions. Banking institutions are classified into scheduled banks and non-scheduled banks. Scheduled banks are those banks which are listed in second schedule of the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934 and students, non-scheduled banks are those which are not listed in the second schedule of the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. At present, there are three non-scheduled banks operating in India. Non-scheduled banks are not eligible for having loan from the RBI for day-to-day -day activities, but under emergency conditions, RBI grant loan to them. Whereas, scheduled banks are further classified into commercial banks and cooperative banks. Commercial banks included public sector banks, private sector banks, foreign banks and regional rural banks. And cooperative banks include the state cooperative banks and district cooperative banks. Reserve Bank of India is the highest monetary authority in the country. It makes rules and regulation for the scheduled commercial banks in India. And non-banking institutions are development banks or development financial institutions, mutual funds and insurance company. So what are development banks? Development banks are special financial institutions. They provide medium and long-term finance to the industry agriculture and other key sectors. Other key sectors include the housing sector and export-import sector. They provide finance to both public and private sector. Development banks are multi-purpose financial institutions. They do term lending, investment in securities and other activities. Development banks are also known as term lending institutions or development finance institutions. Example of development banks are industrial development banks, agricultural development banks, export import development banks, housing development banks. Now next are the mutual funds. Now what is mutual funds? Mutual fund is a trust or an organization that pools the saving of a number of small investors who shares a common financial goal. The money that's collected is then invested by the fund manager in different types of securities depending upon scheme stated objectives. Another non-banking institutions are the insurance companies. Insurance is a mean of protection from financial loss against the risk of contingent or uncertain loss. An entity which provides insurance is known as an insurer or an insurance company and a person or entity who buys insurance is known as insured or as a policy holder. So this is all about the financial institutions. The second component of the structure of financial system is the financial market. 
the market of an economy where funds are transacted between the fund surplus and fund scarce individual and group is known as the financial market in a broader term financial market may be described as any marketplace where buyers and sellers participate in trade of financial assets such as equities bonds currencies and derivatives financial market is not a source of finance but they are linked between the savers and investors both individual as well as institutional based on the nature of funds which are their stock in trade financial markets are classified into money market and capital or securities market capital market is a market for long term funds this is categorized into primary market and secondary market primary market is also known as new issue market in primary market securities which are not previously available are offered to the investor for the first time through public issue prospectus private placement right issues and preferential issues so these are the different modes through which the financial securities are issued to the investors capital formation take place in the new issue market whereas in the secondary market already existed securities in the market are traded through the stock exchange it means the buying and selling of the shares through the stock exchanges this market plays and plays only an indirect role in industrial financing by providing liquidity to investment already made capital market is regulated by sebi that is the securities and exchange board of india then we have money market money market is a market where short term lending and borrowing take place between the cash surplus and cash scarce side money market has two categories organized money market and unorganized money market unorganized money market is a market whose activities are not regulated like the organized market unorganized money market includes indigenous bankers money lenders chit funds and nidhis they provide loans for a short term of period at a high rate of interest indigenous bankers receive deposits and lend money to the individuals or private firms there are basically four such bankers in the country functioning these are the gujarati sharofs multani or shikarpuri sharofs marwadi kayas and chetiars whereas money lenders are concerned they are the most localized form of money market in india they have their two forms professional money lenders and non professional money lenders and then we have chit funds nidhis mainly operate in south india and they lend to only their members and loan companies they charge very high interest rate that is 36 to 48% per annum and have selective reach in the economy so these are the non organized money market when we talk about the organized money market then this form of market in india is just close to 3 decades old it was the chakravarti committee formed in 1985 which for the first time underlined the need of an organized money market in the country and then vogel committee formed in 1987 laid the blueprint for this market's development money market is regulated by rbi in india and rbi keeps the strict control over the working of the organized money market total of 8 instruments designed to be used by different categories of business and industrial firms these are the treasury bills certificates of deposit commercial paper commercial bill call money market money market mutual funds repos and reverse repos cash management bill trading in the money market is conducted over the telephone followed by written confirmation from both the borrowers and lenders so this is all about the financial market the third component of the structure of financial system is the financial assets or the financial instruments financial instrument is a claim against a person or an institution who issue these securities for a payment at a future date of a sum of money and or a periodic payment in the form of interest or dividend financial instruments represent shares debentures bonds derivatives etc financial instruments have enabled people to hold a portfolio of different financial assets which in turn helps in reducing risk the financial instruments fall into three broad categories 
primary or direct instruments, secondary or indirect instruments and derivatives. Primary or direct securities are securities issued by non-financial economic units. The main type of primary securities are ordinary equity shares, preference shares and debentures or bonds. Equity shares are ownership securities and represent risk capital. The equity shareholders are bear the risk, are residual claimants on the income and assets and also they participate in the management of the company. Next is the debenture. A debenture is a creditorship security. The debenture holders get the pre-specified interest and first claim on the assets of the entity. They have no right to vote in the meetings of the company. There are different kinds of debentures are available like participating debentures, convertible debentures, non-convertible debentures, etc. Another is the preference share. Preference share is a hybrid security and have the features of both equity and debentures. It combines both ownership and creditorship privileges. The holders of such securities have preference or prior rights over the equity holders in respect of fixed dividend as well as return of capital. All preference shares are redeemable within 10 years. Then there are secondary or indirect securities. Secondary securities are the financial assets issued by financial intermediaries such as unit issued by mutual funds, policies of insurance companies, deposits of bank, security receipts issued by securitization and assets reconstruction companies. Then there are derivatives. Financial market is highly volatile market. The prices of securities in the stock market fluctuate constantly. Through the use of derivative instruments, the investors generally minimize their risk. We can say that derivatives are used for hedging purposes. The derivative is a financial instrument whose value is derived from the value of one or more underlying assets, which can be commodities, interest rates, precious metals, currency, bonds, stocks, indices, etc. The most commonly used derivative products are forwards, futures and options. The last component of Indian financial system is financial services. Financial services are concerned with the design and delivery of advice and financial products to individual and businesses. It is the presence of financial services that enables a country to improve its economic condition whereby there is more production in all the sectors leading to economic growth the benefit of economic growth is reflected on the people in the form of economic prosperity wherein the individual enjoys higher standard of living. It is here the financial services enables an individual to acquire or obtain various consumer products through higher purchase. In the process, there are a number of financial institutions which also earn profits. The presence of these financial institutions promote investment, production, savings, etc. Financial services are further fall into two broad categories. They are the asset or fund based financial services and fee or advisory based financial services. The Indian financial service sector until the early 1770s was rather unexciting. The financial service sector in India was reborn in the mid 70s when a series of innovative services hit the financial system. First we will discuss about the asset or fund based financial services. Fund based financial services are method of providing finance and capital to various firms or the companies in the form of current assets or fixed assets. Assets or fund based services are the leasing and higher purchases, factoring and forfeiting, housing finance, insurance services and products, venture capital financing, banking services and products. Whereas the fee or advisory based financial services include the merchant banking, credit rating, stock broking, depository. When financial institutions operate in specialized field to earn income in the form of fee, commission, brokerage or dividend is called fee based financial services. 
so student this is all about the indian financial system and we can say that a financial system is a complex also a very well integrated set of sub systems of financial institutions market instruments and services which facilitates the transfer and allocation of funds efficiently and effectively an efficient articulate and developed financial system is very much important for rapid economic growth of any economy the indian financial system underwent a series of development namely the privatization of financial institutions reorganization of institutional structure and investor protection after the liberalization in 1991 which paved the way for economic stability and progress of the country i hope this session gave you some valuable insights about this topic thank you